Uh oh. Got a feeling this is gonna be in my future. It's just inevitable at this point. Be gentle, everyone. I am but a small boy. Greetings, fellow Vita fans. This is James with PS Vita at 2 a.m. Coming at you once again with another exciting video. Although that might be left up to your interpretation. And if you're new here and love everything PlayStation Vita, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure to leave me your thoughts and opinions on my choices here down in the comments section. But I think we all know what those are going to be. So this following video comes from Patreon as this is a Patreon requested topic. Rizal Pliskin asked me, are there any popular games out there that I personally don't like. Oh boy, Pandora's box has surely been open with this one. And I was thinking about this for a while and honestly, not really. Huh. Well, maybe Pandora's Box hasn't been open then. All of the popular games on the PS Vita I like to a certain extent. Can't say I dislike any of them. However, there are some that I feel that are overrated. Okay, never mind. Pandora's Box surely has been open. Thus, here we are today. These are a list of games that I personally feel are, in fact, overrated. But what games do you feel are overrated? Make sure to tell me in the comment section. This way I won't have to suffer alone. Now, keep in mind, that doesn't mean that I don't like these games. In fact, all the games I'm about to talk about, I actually like like quite a bit. I just feel that they get a bit too much attention lavished on them to where people kind of avoid other games in this genre. Sometimes even games in the same franchise, which you'll see momentarily. So let's start off the list with, and this is probably one that everybody who has been following this channel for any length of time probably already knows what I'm going to choose, but Yee's 8 Lacrimosa of Donna. Yep, those thumbs downs are definitely in my future now. Okay, so what is it about this game that makes me put it on the list? Now don't get me wrong, Yee Yeez 8 is a fantastic action RPG. It has great characters, it has a great storyline, it even has a pseudo Gilligan's Island kind of feel to it in that you're stranded on this island. Though a bigger question to ask yourself at this point is how many people out there actually got that Gilligan's Island reference? The boss battles are epic, the leveling up system is nice, I just feel that the timing for this game overshadowed another game on the PS Vita that often gets overlooked, which is Tokyo Xanadu, which is a game I talked about not that far off ago. It's essentially the same game at its core aspect here. The only difference between Xanadu and Yeez is that Xanadu is a bit more of a dungeon crawler action RPG, while Yeez is more of like an open world action RPG. Jeez, now that I'm saying that out loud, I wonder why one overshadowed the other. Gosh darn open world powers, you're just too strong for me. So you can kind of see why this game overshadowed the other, which is really ironic because both of them come from the same company, Falcom. Yeah, it was just poor timing on this one, but I will say that if you haven't had a chance to check out Tokyo Xanadu, then you're really should because it's certainly a worthy title on the PS Vita. And better than Lacrimosa of Donna. Okay, I'll go to my room without supper now. So sticking to our guns with the whole stranded on a deserted island aspect, seriously, did anybody out there get that reference? We are talking now about Danganronpa 2. So I think we know about the Danganronpa series, right? A group of kids is stranded for unknown reasons and the only way they can escape is by murdering another student and not get caught. Also, this franchise seems to have a bear fetish. Just thought I'd point that out. And the gameplay itself plays like part visual novel, part Phoenix Wright, where you gotta figure out who done it. So why am I picking Danganronpa 2? I mean, there are essentially all the same thing, right? Well, if you ask any fan of the series, chances are they're gonna say that their favorite entry in said franchise is in fact the second entry. And I personally am going to go foul on this. In other words, everybody is wrong except me which means everybody is probably right except me. Because while the characters and story were great, I feel like the second game kind of overshadows the first one. I just really don't care to be stranded on a deserted beach, unless it's that show. I mean, yeah, I guess depending on who you talk to, it still can kind of give you a feeling that you're trapped. But compared to the first one, which just gave you such a fantastic feeling of claustrophobia and isolation, this one, in my personal opinion, just kind of seems to fall flat because you are trapped in a giant school with no way out. Which I personally feel is a lot more intense than being trapped on a beach, where it's all bright and sunny and there's umbrellas and iced tea and stuff like that. Not to mention the more tropical theme music that plays. It's tropical music of death, but you know, still tropical music. And while I understand where they were trying to go with the whole deserted beach idea, it just didn't give me that feeling. Plus, I kind of like the characters better in the first game. Except for Mikan and Chiaki. They're still best girl. It also had better 
twists. Now I will say Danganronpa 2 probably did have better class trials and that it was harder to figure out who done it. Whereas in Danganronpa 1, uh, the tr murderers weren't that hard to figure out. Heck, the first one basically tells you who it is if you're looking hard enough. But other than that, yeah, I'll take Danganronpa 1 over Danganronpa 2 any day of the week. Okay, I'll go yet again to my room without supper. Next up is Soldner X2 Final Prototype. Yep, we're tossing a shmup into this bad boy. And I hate to repeat myself on this phrase, but if you were to ask any PS Vita fan what their favorite shmup is on said PS Vita, chances are you would hear this game's name brought up. And trust me, I'm shaking my fist as I say that. And although I don't feel like it quite reaches the high plateau of being overrated, at least when compared to other games on this list, it is still a game that overshadows other titles in the same franchise. Oh, and don't worry, I'm still shaking that fist. Now, Again, Soldier X2 Final Prototype is awesome. Great 3D graphics, a great soundtrack, great power-ups, with some fantastic unlockables. Yeah, you don't just go from point A to B and then unlock the next level. You actually have to fulfill some requirements in each level in order to obtain this. And you gotta fight an alien force, because how could you not in a shmup? 10 out of 10 all the way. Well, maybe a solid 9. So why is this game on the list? Well, again, I feel like this title overshadows other titles on the PS Vita, thinking off the top of my head right now, such as Vasara Collection. This too is a shmup. More horizontal than vertical, but you get the point. Or wait, is that more vertical than horizontal? I always get those two confused. And it's actually based off of an old arcade game, which in itself is awesome, and is just overall a fantastic port. Another game I would also like to bring up is Habroxia 2, or Habroxia, or however you say it. Not the first one. The first one was, it was kind of generic, but the second game really was outstanding. Yes, it did play more of like an 8-bit slash 16 bit game compared to Solner X2, which was done in a fantastic 3D style just to die for drooling visuals. Yes, that's actually a sentence, but it was still fantastic in its own right. Had power-ups, in fact you could even permanently upgrade your ship or downgrade it depending on what kind of difficulty you wanted to choose for your gameplay. I personally always upgraded it because I'm just terrible at video games. You could increase your health, you could increase your defense, you could increase your offense. It had a crap ton of secret levels plus a hard mode at the end, which of course I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. But again, I just feel like Soldner X2 Final Prototype kind of overshadowed all the others. And for that, I will always love slash loathe it. But more love because it is fantastic. But I'm still kind of upset though. Bipolar much? So next up here is, well, well my gosh, if Yeez 8 wasn't obvious enough, then I would say that this next entry probably needs no introduction. It certainly takes the cake, the whole enchilada, if you will. This here is Persona 4 Golden. Honestly, do I even need to speak of why this game is kind of overrated? Yeah, I say that as everybody is no doubt picking up their torch and pitchforks at me now. The Persona series just in general has been blowing up as of late, and this game is in fact one of the reasons it started to do so. In fact, you could kind of say this is the ball of yarn that got the ball rolling, if that makes sense. Eh, it wasn't that good of a metaphor. So, Persona 4 Golden. I've played it, you've played it, we've all played it, and we all love it. You've got an epic murder story, social links along with waifus, which is my personal favorite, a fantastic soundtrack that will just get in your head every single time. I mean, the music was so epic that they ended up making a spin-off series because of it. Multiple endings, a memorable cast of characters, and uh, I could go on here. So why is it overrated? Again, I'm probably just stating the obvious here, but because this game is in fact so connected to the PS Vita that I feel a lot of people, especially those who are not familiar with the PS Vita, think like this is the only worthwhile game playing in its library. Which as we hardcore Vita fans know is definitely not true. Because we do have in fact other games in this genre that are fantastic as well. As mentioned before, Tokyo Xanadu. I would also like to give a shout out to the Trails of Cold Steel series. Yeah, those are actually on the PS Vita as well. Well, two of them anyway. Still kind of a bummer that we never got the third entry, but it's not like I'm salty or anything. And then of course we can't forget about the Atelier franchise. There are so many of these games on the PS Vita. Even more so if you're willing to import. The Conception 2 game is even awesome on this platform, yet I don't hear nearly as many people talking about it, if at all. More leaning towards the if at all. So yeah, I guess you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I just feel like as far as RPGs go on the PS Vita, this is the one that always gets brought up and makes a lot of people feel that that's all there is. Which is really ironic to me because the PS Vita is, yeah, you know, it's kind of known for its JRPGs. Yeah, this one steals all the sunlight, or spotlight, or you know what I mean. Rise, how could you do this to us? Just kidding, I love you a lot. But still, how could you do this to us? Whew. 
got myself kind of overworked there with that last one. So anyway guys, that is just really a small portion of the games that I personally feel are overrated on the PS Vita. But I don't want to turn this into a hate video, so I think I'll just stop there. You kind of get the picture at this point. Huh, wonder how many of these I've acquired so far. But guys, I would love to know, what games do you feel are overrated on the PS Vita? And what games do you feel deserve more attention than said games that you feel are overrated? Please let me know down in the comments section where we can all have like one giant flame war, probably I'm assuming. It's bound to happen. And as always, follow Vita fans. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It really means a lot to me. Love you all, and I'll see you next time. This video has been brought to you in part by all of these wonderfully generous supporters who help make this content possible. So a huge thank you goes out to Buzz Saiyan, Hector Gonzalez, Franz Hartle, Chris Foxhound, Razal Pliskin, Kayonko, Oridri, 1488 Dental, Burz and Mystery, No Good, Azumara, Juan M. Hermosillo, Lacerated 87, Nintendo Switch at 2am, Eric DeWitt, Donut Valley, Tasha Monti, Starlight Mirror, Ricardo Martinez, Mazgus, PSP Guru, Dr. Super Artie, Matt Hargit, Jamie, Saban Fire, Airkick72, Legion21, Randy Azudech, Wathorga, B Mystery, Zikrito, Matt Fox, Alan Iwazu, Reiko Star, Shin Snake, Neo Arashi, Milk Sama, Meshuga360, Lucian Ryu Cat, Berserker Games, Hero Acer, BMF, Phantom XRS, Gutter Drums, Adam Sony, Claymer Merlarkey, Saul Ramirez, Hemdal Imber, PS Vita S, VG Legends, Kyle Brooks, Richard Cruz, Jared Hado, JR, Joseph Shavak, Kevin Enright, Silica, Jelle, Heston Joseph, Per Sterner, H Hitter, Crazy Cat, Adam Thurry, Wendy K, Michael O'Connor, Rodrigo Vera, Skullshur Tugel TCG, and David Ray. And a special thank you to Blaine Locklear, Michael Marchant, and Thomas Cromet for the recent outside donations. If you would be interested in supporting the channel and gaining access to a number of perks, including having your name featured on the end credits of these videos, or if you wish to remain anonymous that can be provided too, then make sure to check the links down in the description below. I have numerous ways for you to do this down there. Can't support in this manner? Don't worry about it. I also have some affiliate links from both Amazon and PlayAsia for anyone who is interested in purchasing something from them. Basically the way it works is so long as you use one of those links to just access their website, then anything you purchase afterwards, a small commission will go to help support this content at no extra cost to you, the consumer. I also have channel merchandise available, and of course, as always, likes and shares can help equally as much. Huh. So I wonder how many thumbs downs I've accumulated since the making of this video. I'm gonna check on that right now. Holy cow!